Welcome to the 2020 Virtual Festival of the Aspen Music Festival and School. Welcome to the Harp Department. My name is Nancy Allen, and today I have the great pleasure of presenting to you three of our very talented harp students, Adam Fan, Phoebe Powell, and Ben Albertson. I hope you enjoy their performances in this masterclass setting. Thank you. First, I'd like to perform a work for you by George Gershwin, arranged for the piano by Earl Wilde, and then transcribed for the harp by myself. It's a beautiful work, embraceable you, and welcome to our harp department. everyone, welcome to the Aspen Music Festival virtual season of the summer of 2020. My name is Nancy Allen, and I'm here today to bring my instrument to you and to bring some of my students to you, some of whom you know and you've seen play or heard play before, and others who were coming for the first time of their life. We're presenting them in performances and discussions about the harp about the music festival and about life as a musician, a young musician, especially in this world today when performance is our voice and we feel a little bit worried about that, but we are sure that we're going to bring you a lot of beautiful music and um, a lot of ideas about how to enjoy music from your home. And we wish we were in Aspen but we've had many good summers myself. I've had over 45 summers in Aspen 
and I'm looking forward to coming back next summer. My first guest today is a, a student of my own from the Juilliard School. His name is Adam Fan, and I welcome him to this virtual stage. Adam is uh, just entering his master's degree at the Juilliard School. He just achieved his Bachelor of Music at Juilliard, and he's been in Aspen during the summers of his life for three years already. He is our very special fellowship harpist. That means he's my right-hand man, and he takes care of everything and plays everywhere that I don't play. And he sort of shepherds all the other students and makes sure they have a good time, and he, he teaches them the ropes, and he also acts as a mentor to the younger people who come in for the first time. Adam, welcome to the Aspen Music Festival Summer Stage. Good to be here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel as if we've had a long history here already in Aspen, and Aspen actually loves Adam because he plays so beautifully, and he's played a lot on every stage of Aspen, and he also has worked a lot downtown, and everyone knows Adam. Adam is um, prepared um, to play for you today a beautiful work of the composer, French composer Jean Croix. He also was going to play one excerpt because our world of the harp is um, a combination of solo playing, and that means solo, all by ourselves, and also chamber music, which we do a lot of in Aspen, but also orchestral playing. We are a very important part of the orchestra. We have a great voice that is unique in the orchestra and in the sonority of the orchestra. And so Adam chose uh, an excerpt to play as a sort of an exercise in what he has to do in real life when he's auditioning for an orchestra or when he's playing with the orchestra in Aspen. I'm sure he's played this work and I'll let him tell you the name of it. Sure, I'll be playing an excerpt from Verdi's La Forza de Del Stino and it's a very unimportant excerpt in the harp world because it's on most of our auditions. So it's a good one to start with and it's a great warm up. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful, beautiful performance of a very difficult, it's a tricky excerpt. And the reason why I'm glad you played it today is just because that's the reality of our harp world, having to play these excerpts behind a screen sometimes yeah. or on a tape. And uh, it sounds it sounds really wonderful. Um, this uh, overture is a great piece, and I'm sure you've played it in the orchestra. Have you played it in Aspen, actually? Yes, I did. My first summer, I played it in Aspen. Very good. So one of the things about Aspen is that we learn a lot of orchestral rep. And I always laugh because when I've been there so many years that uh, when I joined the Philharmonic in New York, someone turned to me and said, how do you know all these excerpts so well? How do you know these orchestral works? Because you haven't been playing in an orchestra. And I said, I've been in Aspen for 30 years. You know, I just played everything. So I'm glad that you have played it. Uh, it sounds fantastic. And as you know, when, when we go into an audition, sometimes we have to play it different tempi because yeah different conductors or different panelists expect something different. So I never would tell you to play it faster, to play it slower. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I know how tricky it is. And, and my students put me to shame by playing all these things from memory, which is fantastic. So Adam, um, you've played a lot of harp repertoire and you've been to, um, uh, uh, you've played a lot of recitals, you've been to competitions. And uh, the piece that you've chosen to play today is a little bit off the beaten path. Okay, um, yeah. of, of harp repertoire, and it shouldn't be because it's absolutely gorgeous, but it was sort of hidden for a long time. And do um, you want to tell us a little bit about the piece that you're going to play? Uh, I mean, just about there. what, what, what <laughs> Adam, tell us, I can tell us, I know what you're going to play. Um, and you could play one of, of 10 pieces today, but this, it, the work you, you, that you've chosen is by an unknown composer whose name sure. is, name? Mm -hmm. Jean Croix. Jean Croix, and he is from France. Yes. And um, uh, he wrote other things for the harp as well. 
Yes, he wrote some chamber works as well, and that's how I grew to know him. You played first his quintet? I haven't played his quintet, but I actually really, really do like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so what did you play of his? You Did you did you play the, the duo or you just heard his music? I played the duo. The flute and harp duo. Okay. Yes. And um, he... he um, he wrote the quintet for the Quintet Instrumentale, which was okay. the, the, the ensemble of my teacher, Marcel Gronchini. Um, but Marcel Gronchini's predecessor, or uh, um, successor in that quintet was um, Pierre Jamais. And Jean Croix was evidently close with Pierre Jamais um, and, and consulted him about uh, different things. Um, this is, what, what would you call this piece? What style would you say? Uh, I mean, it's two different impromptus, but I think they both capture two different types of uh, colors and emotions, which is why I really enjoy playing them. Mm -hmm. it... R written in 1925? Yes. Written in 1925, um, and uh, uh, Jean Croix was from the um, tip of France, Brittany, and he was actually a naval officer. So I found it sort of amusing because I like to look up what, what people do. Mm -hmm. um, and what pe what their history is about why they chose because we don't have like twenty works for harp by each composer yeah. we have we have a handful of, of of works because the harp is difficult to write for due to mm -hmm. due to its mechanical system and the pedals and the chromatics sharps and flats as we know so um, I just found it interesting that he was actually a really devoted naval officer growing up on the coast of, yeah, of France that. in Brittany yeah yeah and he uh, but he took time off to, to um, write music. And uh, he, he, he was quite famous for, um, uh, maybe it's worth, worthwhile listening to, um, you know, I, this is not such a big assignment, but I, I told someone yesterday to listen to everything that Foray ever wrote in mm -hmm. one of my students. You know, but you, you, if you listen to a lot of Jean Croix's music, it's very different. He wrote a beautiful uh, cello sonata, equal, oh, yeah. equal parts, beautiful, um, very inspired by Franck and... Um, uh, he also wrote a work for cello and orchestra. He's got he's got a lot of, of a lot of music, but I just found it interesting. We'll talk about it afterwards, maybe or during this time, because I find it very impressionistic. And mm -hmm. he was definitely definitely um, influenced by um, yeah by the times and all the other the famous sure. composers we think of, and, and 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 then our harp composers were in turn also mm -hmm. inspired by Debussy and Ravel and. Uh, all the famous impressionistic people. Okay, Adam, great. Yeah. So it has two movements and you can, uh, maybe we'll play one at a time.
What a great, what a great uh, compliment uh, to to the first um, to the first one. Everyone learns the first uh, impromptu, but not not usually the second one. Um, that's great. Uh, uh, what do you think? I, I love this one. It's fun to play. So, uh huh. I, I wish I could work more on the characters of the second movement because I feel like sometimes I'm so worried of the inner notes that I don't really bring out all the different little sections. Yeah. But yeah. So while while the first improvisation. I'm impromptu reminds me of so much of of um, Pas la Neige of, of mm. WC or um, Cloche yeah. uh, Sous la Neige of Marcel Tournier of his Image yeah. that you probably played or WC um, the Snow is Dancing or that kind of, as much as those are, 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 are reminiscent of that first impromptu the second one to me Reminds me of our good old friend, <clears throat> Germain Taifer. Okay. Because of the nature of the of the patterns and how he mm -hmm. takes the harp into a little bit of a more geometric shape. I see. Okay. And not so harp harpistic, and that's what she did also with her sonata. And mm -hmm. these, I mean, she was died much later than he did, but um, uh, this style is is, is similar. Stops and stops and starts. Yeah, you know, sort of, sort of a spontane, spontaneous kind of. Um, uh, you're you're improvising and you have lots of freedom in between mm -hmm. the sections, uh, which I particularly enjoy the way you do that. Um, they also, I, I, to me, it's a little bit jazzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and, and you know, it, it, Paris it, after World War One was sort of a center of the the dawn of jazz. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of American um, soldiers at who came over and played jazz in a group, and and then jazz clubs mm -hmm. were started. and And you have to know that Les Six, the French Six, and all the other composers were around there. And I don't know how how much you know of Poulenc, how many how many works you know of Poulenc, but mm -hmm. this is also, and and Germain Taifer drew a lot from of inspiration from Poulenc. Yeah. This is also very similar. Um, it, so yeah. I'm looking for a lot more fun, which is what you're searching for. A lot more mm -hmm. fun in in between quirkiness, maybe yeah. more quirkiness in between the sections. And the other thing that I would I would probably use myself um, is a lot more color. Mm -hmm. it, it needs for me. It needs more color. Okay. It, it, in um, in how you play, and I'm not adverse to you writing your own color scheme. Mm -hmm. for this second one. So in other words, if you want, the, the most obvious technique we use is pre la table or close yes. to the sounding board, but the, the ending, even so, I would use that. Okay. Because I, I'm looking for a harder sound, a dry, a dry piano, a piano instrument sound. Okay. And so maybe, maybe you could think of that in terms of how you construct this well, it's quirky. It's it's mm -hmm. it's a cartoon in a way. It's a little bit of a, it's a little bit taunting. It's like childlike. Dee da 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 da. You know, it's very um, it's very childlike, and it, it's mm -hmm. very um, it's it's naughty. Okay. And yeah. It's naughty, and and it's it doesn't behave like the first one is so glorious and and so evocative of of, of you know going through the Musée d'Orsay and seeing all the paintings of the Impressionist mm -hmm. period. This is not that. This is yeah. this is sort of cool, you know. This is like okay. Paris in the nineteen twenties and thirties, and um, and I just need need to feel that from you. Okay. I, the notes are great, Adam. You always play the notes great. So let, let's let's try it and um, let's think more. You know, Gershwin was in town then, and okay. you know, George Ger Gershwin came to town, and um, a lot of Americans came. Uh, to sit in in France and um, uh, and and absorb the culture, but also to share our sort of light light hearted uh, jazz mm -hmm. style, and and that's what I'm missing. So okay, you 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 hit the nail on the head. But that's exactly what you need. So you know it really well. More color, more bite. I mm -hmm. think if I see a a plaque chord, which in harp terms means not arpeggiated, yes. not harp arpeggiando, 
I would use it. Um, okay. I'm not looking. I'm not looking at the score here. Just the first two pages, but I think uh, when I see a flat yeah. chord, I I try mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Let's start at the beginning and really take take your liberty. Okay. Should I start um, after the glissando? Yes. The gliss was great. Mm -hmm. Although Thank actually, <laughs> I love the I love the gliss. So it, and it gives me a, a sense of your timing because the gliss is where he um, actually has a fermata. And then he bumps you on the top of it. But mm -hmm. I also feel that you could do whatever you want there. I don't think okay. you are, okay. you, that you are ordered to go on to the next beat. I think, mm -hmm. you know, certainly if it was danced to, which many things yeah. were in that day, it wouldn't be boom, suddenly, you know, yes. oh, I'm late. Okay. You know, I don't think you should concern yourself with that. Okay. That's beautiful. Would you try it once a little more square and okay. um, and a little lower on the string sure. and and really more? We talked about this in a first lesson months ago. A little drier in the left hand. Yes. Just try. Don't don't. You don't need to impress me with your sound. It's great. Okay. I'm saying even more, Adam. Even more. Can you can you give me a left hand that's smacking? Yeah, even okay. more. Forte. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to cut the beat. In fact, that's your artistic license. I would cut the beat even shorter. It's a quarter note. I, but I think you okay. could just touch, you could touch it on the edge, snap it off. Sure. Okay, so let's do it again. Yeah, that, that would get, might get you in trouble a little bit because it's a little short on the fourth, third and fourth bar, but I like it. But okay. I go a little longer on the, but the first ones were great. Mm -hmm. I thought yeah. really great because it also clears the air so we can hear, which is, which is sort of almost syncopated, even though it's every note, but it sounds like trumpets, mm -hmm. you know, muted trumpets. Yeah. And the left hand, if it's cleaned up, but then just play the third bar and fourth bar for me once. Can you do that? No, uh, uh, fa, fa, do, si, fa, fa. Yeah, and that's correct. So just that much of muffle, that, that amount of muffling yeah. of etouffee, etouffee. Okay. Just a little technical advice. When you get out of your beautiful uh, um, scale, dum tick 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 dum dum tick 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 dum, you come, you get softer. So don't don't dum tick 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 dum to the top. Go to the top and stay loud. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. Perfect. Great playing, Adam. I look forward to. Really, thank you very much for joining us today and in in virtual Aspen and we can go out for a walk and um, <laughs> head up the Ute, Ute Trail now or maybe yes, we'll yes. go over to go over to Cathedral Lake and take a long hike and then have some lemonade by the music festival tent and uh... Hi, Ben Albertson. Welcome to the Aspen Music Festival virtual stage at 2020. The summer of 2020 is a little bit different than all the other summers I've ever been in Aspen. And I've been there for 44 years and this is really a unique situation. Um, but we're glad you're here today to play for us and to talk a little bit about your heart playing and about music in general. Um, we're sorry that you're not in Aspen. This would have been your very first summer in Aspen 
at the music festival. And uh, that's a, a very exciting thing for you, I'm sure, and also for me, because I've heard you play since you were a little bit younger. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry that, but we'll, I'm sure you'll, you'll get to Aspen at some point in your life. But let's for, just pretend for a moment that we're in Aspen, the Aspen trees are fluttering outside, we have a lot of harps at our music festival, and you'll see someday. Um, it's a wonderful festival, and we are so thrilled that you are part of the Harp Class 2020. Well, and you're you. a college... No, go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, I was, of course, looking forward to it, but I'm glad to have this opportunity today. Great. Um, ben, you are a college student in Toronto at the... Glenn Gould School of the Royal Conservatory of Music has mm -hmm. a rather long name, uh, but it's uh, the conservatory in Toronto where I study at. Great. And uh, you come from... Washington State, and uh, so you have already been around the world, and you've been to um, uh, places where I've been been as well, and t and working with you when you were maybe four years ago, three years ago. Um, so I've heard you play a lot, actually, and um, I wasn't surprised that you were going to be coming to Aspen at all. So um, we have a class at at the Aspen Music Festival of seven students, seven or eight students, and so you're one of those, and um, they're all looking forward to hearing you as well. They're all gathering around to, to hear a lot of what we're gonna do today. Um, I haven't heard you play in a long time since your audition, which was great, and you gave a recital, but you've chosen a, a work by a very famous harp composer. And by harp, I mean she was, she, was not only a great, great harpist, probably one of the greatest, the greatest of all time, she was also a composer. And that was rather unique. So the two together brings us this work, which you'll tell us a little bit about, and then we'll we'll play through most of it or some of it, see how we do, and um, see if we can come up with, with any ideas for making it different, better, whatever. Thank you very much, Nancy. And uh, as Nancy mentioned, um, I will be playing the Ballade Fantastique by Henriette Regnier. Um, Henriette Regnier, of course, as Nancy mentioned, uh, faced a lot of challenges uh, that were involved in being a female composer and harpist at that time, um, as it was a very patriarchal society in the music world. Um, but she did manage to persevere through a lot of those challenges. And this particular piece, it's rather interesting um, that it's based on a poem by Edgar Allan Poe, uh, rather a short story by Edgar Allan Poe, that uh, is called The Telltale Heart. And it's a very programmatic piece that involves a lot of murder and a, you know, disembodied uh, person and, you know, a heart beating under the floorboards and all this great stuff that uh, is just um, uh, fantastic material. And uh, to me, it almost seems a little strange that uh, Henri Renouille was a very, very religious woman, and she chose such a gruesome yet uh, uh, non-religious story. But um, she did a great job making it into a piece, and I'm happy to play it today.
beginning um, and go just a little bit and I'll just point that really I'll point at a few things Ben that I think could just add to it here's the here's the thing about getting so good at, as you are at the harp and I've said this to my own students and I say it to myself it's the heart the, the, the higher level you get the harder it gets because you expect more and then you say how can I make this better and that's where a good harp class comes into uh, um, into great use because then your colleagues actually in Aspen, you would see, are very verbal and they love to listen. Everybody plays for each other. And that's that's the great part about the Aspen Music Festival. Even when you're playing in the orchestra, you're sitting next to me or you're sitting next to my um, uh, fellowship harpist, Adam Pham, who's on this master class as well, or you're sitting next to someone else and you're playing orchestral rep and, and you're a team and it's a lot of teamwork. We've used six of eight harps in Aspen and that's what I hope um, we'll get to do someday with you and uh, anyway go ahead and play and I'm just uh, so that the, the items that I have are just little observations um, your hands sound fantastic your harp sounds great I love the way you play so relaxed and um, but with a lot of energy so um, but the, the things I say are, are in this case for you um, not not life-changing in terms of your technique. It sounds good. Great. Everything's working great. You know, so it's just ideas, and that's why we play for other people. I, I, I was sent to many different teachers when, my, when I was younger. My teacher believed in having other, um, other critiques of my, my work, and they were all happy to say just what they felt. So anyway, go ahead and play a little bit, and I'll stop you. You can hear me if I stop you now. Okay. Wonderful. Bravo. Um, the opening that you just played, I'd love for you to play it again. It sounds fantastic. Until, I think when you get to the second line, the bottom notes, um, um, she says, let's vibre, which means let them vibrate, which you do. But to me, it's all too loud. We have a long way to go, and you have such a big palette of, of color and, 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 and volume. I think that it's way too loud. And then when you come to the little section that says en precipitant, it, when you're supposed to be moving just towards the next moderato, the, the tune, as it were, um, it needs also to come from, I would say, from pianissimo, at least, if not triple P, because that's where the piece comes to life, right? So this is an introduction you're playing. And I just think the dynamics, it's difficult on a computer, I know, because sometimes I'm telling my students, you're too loud, they said, I'm hardly playing. But this is for your own... It's like when you tell a story or a good joke. You're going to tell the story and you have to use different voice levels 
And that's what you wanna do more of, I think, in the, in the opening and, and later on, okay? Let's try it one more time and really be soft so that we make a, a, a beautiful introduction of the, the first theme. Now continue. Okay, and well, you're so brilliant. I love it. I really enjoy your playing, Ben. It's really nice. Um, but I want to be more dramatic. I wanted more drama, more drama here. Now, you, this passage that she writes, you know, she leaves out that one note, the left hand, to make it easier for us. The left hand's going da 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 da. Right hand's going da 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 da. And the left, it's very, it's very fun because you can't hear it. I actually play all the notes because I find it easier to play all the notes, and I don't think she would mind. But I just, you sound great from here. But when you're going excelling through that, try it again. And don't spread your chord out so much. Go into the chord. You you take this big um, hiatus, you know, before the chord. You go. I want to go to the top and put my pole in the mountain top. Okay, and then, and then, it's really still accelerating. So don't get slower if you can. Do those octaves. I mean, we all, we know how hard it is there, but keep trying, keep the pace you've reached and then don't slow down to the end. Okay. Give it a try. See what you can do. One thing I've thought about on the octaves after the big chord is almost having like, I feel like there's almost like a pressure there to be like, da, 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 da. Do you think that is also applicable there? Sure. I, I, I wouldn't do it too much because I don't want to lose the energy. You know, it's like you, you open the door, you're in horror, and then something moves very slowly. So it, it doesn't make sense to me, but I know how hard it is. Because we can't go too fast, but uh, I really want to try and keep the tempo almost the same. But yes, I would prepare them a little bit, and we need the security because we've just come off this big chord. But what I mostly want to try is go through the um, the passage before, the, the, the C-sharp diminished chord, uh, it's C-natural diminished chord uh, over the B flat where you start and give me the little kid answer accelerating and then going into the chord. See if you can do that without slowing down. So from on the chord. Yeah. What you do before is fine. It's just the chord. I would just really, um, in fact, as I finish the last notes, the last 16th notes of the passage, I'm already preparing my left hand with the last, last two notes. I'm getting ready to play that chord. I'm already going to inter interrupt with my left hand. I'm not going to wait for that. playing Brent really great I, I I hope to see you live in person soon but I feel like you're here with us um, in the back of the tent where we spend a lot of time tuning harps and moving them and um, uh, I hope you have a great rest of the summer and continue to uh, expand your repertoire and also to flourish like you're doing you sound great and uh, and we'll we'll look forward to uh, talking to uh, Phoebe Powell and Adam a fan together uh, in a little bit. Hello, Phoebe Powell. 
Hi, Nancy. Welcome back to Aspen, to the Aspen virtual season 2020. Thank you. I so in, oh, th thank you. I'm, I so enjoyed having you last summer with us, sitting alongside me in festival orchestra and also listening to you play in, with many other orchestras around the, the campus and at the tent. And um, I was really looking forward to having you, you come again. But here we are in Aspen, uh, feeling Aspen and playing music and making the summer feel like we are with the Aspen Music Festival. Um, last summer, you were a very special student because you were an award student. You came uh, from the Montreal Symphony Competition. Is that correct? Yes, that is. Yeah. And you had a so you you had a entry into Aspen, which was glamorous, and uh, I was so looking forward to hearing you play at that point. Um, you've been a student at, in Toronto at the Glenn Gould Conservatory, yes, right. yeah. and now you have a very exciting future which is um, you've been awarded the principal harp of the New World Symphony in Florida with Michael Tolson Thomas. But here you are diagonally the opposite up in Vancouver and uh, you're waiting to go there. So um, that's a very exciting, yeah. exciting thing to look forward to after we finally break out of this isolation. Mm -hmm. And um, but in the meantime, I'm looking forward to hearing you play after a long after a long year and um, I know uh, you, you were thinking about what you're going to play, and I believe you're playing the Foray Impromptu. Yes. yes uh, Gabriel Foray's Impromptu Opus 86. Um, this is a very famous work for harp. We all, we all learn it. And like many of the famous composers who wrote for harp, he wrote a very small uh, output for the instrument. Of course, he did have the harp in the, in the Requiem, the beautiful harp part oh. throughout the, the Requiem. Um, and, but other than that, Pelleas and Melisande, and another work for harp, Un Chatelain Sautour. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the work you're going to play? Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, this by Foray, um, and he, well, there's a story that goes around that um, apparently he only wrote the first half of it, and then the second half of it, um, he got too busy to write, and so he asked... Um, the harp professor at the Paris Conservatory, uh, Alphonse Hasselmans, um, to finish it for him. Uh, we're not entirely sure if it's an accurate story, but you can sort of tell at the halfway point of the piece that the style changes quite drastically, um, and it turns more into a theme and variation, and it's very uh, dramatic and harpistic, and it's so much fun to play as well, too. Um, but So we don't know if that's the real story. It sort of seems that it might be, but... Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful piece of music that we're very lucky to have it in our mm -hmm. repertoire. Great. And it's in D-flat uh, major, and that's a very good key for the harp because that means all our pedals are, most of our pedals are at the top. But we can't see your feet, but we're looking forward to hearing you play the impromptu of Gabriel Fauré. <laughs>
let's stop there just for a second, then we'll finish the second half. That's beautiful. You're such a mature player. My my only question is about the spacing between the chords. Yeah. And um, so when you're playing the chords, it's almost a little bit like um, uh, a run-on sentence. So like each chord. Right. You know, so I feel like I, I don't have any time. I you said properly. I don't have time to. I would like to hear, I guess, a good way to practice it, um, because what we're trying to hear is, you know, um, the, the melody. And um, it's not the greatest melody on earth, but it deserves, uh, it deserves some shape. Yeah. And it's also a little irregular because it has an extra bar tacked on at the end of it. But I, I think that there's, there's sort of modern performance practice going in, into play here, and that is that it, it should be a little slower. Yeah. I've played it so fast, I can't believe it sometimes, but I'm trying to play it slower. But, um, but more than that, the most important thing for my ear is that I hear the difference between the chords. So when yours is so... Oh, sorry. When your chords are so connected... I, I would like to hear something... So that I would play, I listen for the sound of my heart. say go a little bit more slowly okay um, and, and it's sort of uh, the the analogy that comes to, to my mind is sort of funny it's a, a little bit dragging your heels in your left hand so yes. what's happening is that you're buzzing a little bit with the left hand yes so um, I, just stay out of stay out of the way over you know, right. so you're, watch out you're going a little bit like this you're, you're uh, coming in and making a little bit of a sound in between the chords so easy to do, but try yeah. to hover, hover over. Instead of going, don't raise, just stay, yeah. stay there. See, I'm trying to maximize the amount of time yeah. that, the, that the chord gets to ring, which right. without me invading the space with a finger buzz. And I know how hard it is. We're always gonna buzz, we are harpists. Here's one more thought. Yeah. Um, I, I, that's beautiful. I wouldn't go faster than that. Yeah, believe I like me, that. Believe me, I've played it twice that fast. Yeah. Just because I'm, I'm a, a little bit of a, you know, a hamster in a, in a, in a rolling <laughs> thing. But, uh, but be brave. And I would say the one thing that you could add to that is enjoy every chord that you play. So listen. Yeah, I'm sorry. Listen to every chord. You're going to play a little bit about the tempo that you're, you're playing at now, but enjoy the... Do I hear it? Do I hear it? Yes. And so I'm actually listening to my sound mm -hmm. while I'm playing. I'm going to leave it because you've got it. You've got the idea. I yeah. just what, would encourage you not to slur. Yeah. Yes. Especially as it goes on, because yeah. it just, it becomes un unidentifiable viable as a melody, you know? Yeah. Okay, okay, then you made a beautiful um, diminuendo. Let's start um, wherever you want to, but at the harmonics, if you don't mind, it's sure. all flats. flats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even there, Phoebe, even there, first of all, the piano could be mo le ma uh, much, much more piano, piano. Yeah. Sure. on the harmonics, yeah. yeah. Really yeah. soft. This is going from forte to piano. Yeah. So the harmonics should be very soft and don't prepare me for the chords. Just go. Yeah. 
you, you know, don't don't right. try and give it away where you're going. But I then see. when you come back to the next three chords, the same thing. Give me more space between the chords. Right. It's just a little bit too much like blah, you know, yeah. like you're rolling ruffles. Yeah. Yeah, you know, ruffle you, or foray, foray, foray. You know, and and I would like to hear the melody more. Yeah, and and you just went you went back to it right when you got out of the harmonics. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh gosh, hang on. And also, if I might say, Phoebe, um, yeah. it's a little bit aggressive on the right hand. Mm -hmm. We don't need that. Right. So yeah. you know, right, this is what the harmonics are important. This. Yeah. I always exaggerate a little bit. You're not doing it that oddly. <laughs> I am. But just, just, right. it's just. And then back to you. nor need it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I, I personally don't think so. I hear tradition might have a lot of things right. to yeah. do with it. But um, for me, that it's much more to, it's much more beautiful to end. Right. And then... Right. Know, rather yeah. than prepare us for it. Because it, first of all, he didn't write it. And second yeah. of all, it's a grand... It, it just rises, you know, and, right. and then it's, and then he, and then he changes. He goes yeah. to the, this new character, which is the the true foray. But, but now we're at the main amoso. But your right. tempo should match the beginning of the piece before that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so just the main amoso? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and this is the poetic part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For a second, yes. Um, that's a beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful reminiscent music of uh, Un Chatelain a sa Tour. Yeah. The other, the other work that he wrote for solo harp, um, very similar with the undulating triplets. So um, my first uh, point is that um, although when I was a um, student, I think I I was also trying to learn a lot of notes, and sometimes. I didn't either believe what he wrote or, or, or thought maybe it was left out. But I, I do pay attention to length of notes a lot more than I used to. And the right. first phrase uh, ends on an A, which is an A natural, right? And yeah. it's a half note, it's a half note. So right. that, that the, the fact that it's a half note um, supersedes the fact that we are in, in diminuendo. Right, of course, yeah, because it needs to okay. rain for that bar. I need to hear it, yeah, and it needs to last. And we are not a piano. I might, I might say again, we we are sound decay. So yeah. we can't play a, 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 a um, and then because not only would they not hear it, yeah. but it won't last. Right. So we can lift it up a little bit, but we yeah. need to make sure it, it's a beau. That that's the most important note to me, right? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Because because. It's the, th you know, it's the third. Yeah. yeah. It determines um, whether we're major or minor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I go, go from, from, the, the, from the beginning. Try and do one more phrase. Just like that. Okay.
Good, good, beautiful. beautiful. And and Maida, another trick to make a note like that stand out is yep. to wait, which you did almost enough, but I would do it even more. Okay. Instead of right, we don't want to invade the space. And my rule in French music, anyway, um, is that. I, I take and I give. So what I, I what I take, I give back. So right. if I take time, that's a little severe, but yeah. instead of going slower, you know. I mean, there's just so much we yeah. can have of that dominant yeah. chord. You know, it's just, it's, <laughs> there's just so much you can do with it, but. Yeah, we have that flat nine. That's sort of the theme of this piece is a lot of flat nines, yeah. which which adds a spice to the dominant seventh chords all the time. And yeah. that is, a, a, you know, a very powerful note because it's mm. it's making us feel not quite happy yeah. Yeah. about our dominant seventh chord. So on, let's hear some allegro now. This, this is right. where you show off your... <laughs> my, my, my technique, my <laughs> the fun part, <laughs> the instrument. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and planning your summer around the Aspen Music Festival. And it was a pleasure to have you last year. And I'm looking forward to everything you're going to do in your career with the New World Symphony. Yeah, I'm very excited. Thank you for having me Thank as well, you. too.
Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, so much. That was really a great performance from everybody. And um, Ben Albertson, Adam Fan, Phoebe Powell, um, thank you so much for being part of our virtual season at the Aspen Music Festival of 2020. What a pleasure to have you and what a pleasure to listen to you. Even though I'm not right next to you, it feels like we're all together and uh, in our class uh, backstage at the Aspen Music Festival tent. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to you and also to um, ask you just a little bit about your impressions of Aspen having been there for three summers or two summers or, or not having ever been there. Ben, uh, maybe we'll start with Ben because we were so looking forward to having you. I've, I've worked with you at other festivals in when you were in high school. And uh, this one is very different. Aspen's a very special music festival. I, I've been there for 45 years, which is unbelievable to me. I have a lot of experiences in my in my brain, a lot of images of different harpists over the years, different actually generations of harpists, including myself going going to the Aspen Music Festival as a student. Um, I actually was a fellowship harpist. I, I was never really a student there, but I learned so much just sitting in the orchestra, playing chamber music and playing a lot of contemporary music. I feel like I never stopped studying. It was an extension of my college and, uh, and high school also. So I was just curious, Ben, um, uh, what were you looking forward to most about Aspen and what are you missing the most? Well, um, it's a hard question to ask and answer. Well, it's a hard question to answer because I'm not there, but um, of course, I was really looking forward to um, the variety of things that Aspen offers. The amazing instructors, of course, uh, chamber music and orchestral music. Um, those are all things that I love to do. And I thought that Aspen would be one of the best places, if, you know, that I could possibly get these kind of activities and, and learn and, and enjoy and grow from them. And it was, uh, it would be something that I was, you know, really looking forward to in all those respects. It's hard to choose one more than the others. Have you ever been in a, a large harp class and then played alongside some of your colleagues and your teacher in the orchestra? Um, well, I've done like two harps. Uh, I think I did three harps in a piece once. Um, but, uh, and I was in a harp ensemble when I was little. Uh, Patricia Worcester uh, is a harpist uh, based on the West Coast. Uh, she used to run the World Harp Congress, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, um, she had a little harp ensemble I was part of, but I hadn't really done, um, I guess I had my school, of course, the, as Phoebe graduated there in my first year. Um, and the Glenn Gould School of the Royal Conservatory of Music in Toronto, Ontario. And we have a harp studio there and that's wonderful. But um, yeah, Aspen was definitely something different that I was looking forward to. I think one of the highlights for, my, for me and also I hope for the students is when we have these tour de force harp sections, which are, everyone's playing great. We have a lot of time, the luxury of a lot of time to rehearse our parts together. That's when we're playing um, operas of uh, Wagner, works of Strauss, uh, Berlioz Symphony Fantastique with six harps or as many as we can have or Schoenberg's Girl Leader. And we had eight harps on stage playing extremely prominent parts. That for me is the most fun. And, and when I play with the students next to me, it's so different than giving a lesson to someone so that's what I was looking forward to with you, Ben. I've had that experience with both Phoebe and Adam. I was looking forward to, to uh, playing a La Mer or a, um, a Rosen Cavalier uh, of Strauss, something with you alongside. But we'll do that eventually. And yeah. it was really great to hear you, you hear you play alone. Um, Adam, you are a, sort of a veteran Aspenite. You might even have uh, your passport might even say Aspen on it. Um, you're our fellowship uh, harpist for uh, this. This would be your second year of fellowship, but you've actually been there three summers and you, you work in Aspen at, uh, uh, at a restaurant, um, a Vietnamese restaurant, and you're popular around town and you're popular with the audiences because you play so much. 
<laughs> and and you have a, and you have a nice smile and you play great. Um, a, a, Adam, being my own student at Juilliard, I, I know him quite well. Uh, but Adam, in the in the two years that you've you've been there three years actually. <laughs> Adam, in the three years you've been there, what's the what's the highlight or what are, are the highlights of your time in Aspen? And do you feel like you're sort of in Aspen right now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like maybe Phoebe might have the same kind of response to this, but of course in Aspen, there are so many like great musical opportunities, like all of the concerts in the tent and listening to concerts on the lawn. That's something that I will miss and something that's always the highlight of the summer. Um, but I think the biggest part these past three years that um, every summer that I've been, the Harp Studio has been really good friends with each other and we've all been really supportive of each other. So doing this Zoom call with other um, harpists that I adore it kind of makes me feel like I'm in Aspen a little bit. I kind of feel like mm -hmm. I'm, uh, you know, like outside of the tent and just chilling before we go to a concert. But um, mm -hmm. of course, like the highlight has just been getting to work with you and Annalene and Savan for like the past few summers have been really great as well with other faculty. Like um, Nadine was once my chamber coach. And Nadine it, Asin. You know, Nadine, Nadine yeah. Asin. Uh -huh who we love, um, but there's, it's just the people, I think is what makes Aspen the best summers because the music is great already. We're already playing great music, but it's the people that surround us in the festival that always makes it a really good time. Mm -hmm. we, so God bless for Zoom, because <laughs> again, there we go. We spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of time together. We spend a lot of time on stage. We spend a lot of time in back practice rooms and dressing rooms, trying to find enough space to have a harp class. We spend some time on the on the stage of Harris Hall. And we also spend some time late nights on the actual stage of a tent. Um, but we also spend a lot of time trying to schedule everybody into <laughs> the different orchestras. Um, and, and that generally occurs behind the tent under one of the great big trees. Yeah. And I actually brought a picture which we're gonna show later of that view, looking under the trees at the bluest sky in the world of Aspen and the fluttering Aspen leaves. And that's for me, one of the great experiences is, um, of, of Aspen is having you all together and just going through all the works we're gonna play during the summer and um, who wants to play what, who has played something already, who wants a chance to, uh, the opportunity to play something again, and who doesn't want the opportunity and wants to move on to something a little bit more unknown, like many of the contemporary works that you've both, uh, both Phoebe and Adam have played. And I remember as a, as a student um, being challenged by extraordinarily difficult parts. One of the most difficult was Peter Maxwell Davies. So I'll never forget it. And I had one day to learn it. And I, I thought, oh, okay, maybe I should go home now. But it was a great, <laughs> it was a great challenge. And it was with a great soprano, Janda Gaetani, who was a different generation, but um, she was singing and I just felt so fortunate. And I got to know all, many of the faculty members who were icons, they were really um, famous in the music world. And I, I felt like I could talk to them in a way I couldn't talk to them at Lincoln Center, uh, that suddenly we could have just a chat by the lemonade stand or by the, the kiosk. Bye. Yeah, and it just was really, I mean, to be able to talk to, um, the names of people you you might not know, but Zara Nelsova, or Lynn Harrell, or um, Claude Frank, the great pianist, and his wife Lillian Kalir. And I just felt so lucky that I, I was a little student, uh, just starting out my career, and and they treated me like uh, like a real musician. So um, I also got to play alongside so many people that um, I learned a lot from. Albert Tipton and Lillian, the great flutist, uh, Lillian Fuchs, legendary viola player. So many people. And that, that for me was one of the priceless things of being an Aspen, just learning on a different level from what my conservatory, which was fantastic, but it couldn't offer me, me that because I was able to play in a professional orchestra. And, um, and I also watched some of the young, as I grew older, I watched some of the young stars of today in, in their chairs with their feet hardly touching the ground. And I mean, many of these young um, violinists and cellists and, and wind players who became stars later. And I knew them when they were just 
be- beginning in, in Aspen. I was there when Midori was showcased in a masterclass with Pinko Zuckerman, and she was so, so small, and she played, played bar talk. You know, it was unbelievable. So the masterclasses are another highlight in Aspen, I would say, because you can go to any masterclass, and I hope that you both went to some and, and learned from vocalists and pianists. But Phoebe, you were coming for the second summer of your life. You were a, um, a great addition to the festival, a very strong player. Um, and, and you've got to play a lot of things while you were in Aspen, but we certainly were looking forward to having you this summer. And what, what was, what was one or two memories, um, uh, or your favorite moment in Aspen musically and personally, I guess. <laughs> there are too many to count. Um, but I would probably say musically, um, getting to play Mahler two with you um, and then two other um, right. students, Marcel and uh, Deanna, who were there last year. Um, there were four, four harps on stage and that was probably that was something. Yeah, it was a really quite a spectacular um, concert. And um, we like it was the last concert of, of the season as well, too. And so it was just a very emotional experience. But being able to work with you as well, too, and just play alongside you, it was a whole a whole different experience as well too and, and uh mm-hmm. yeah i really that that was probably one of one of my many highlights um mm-hmm. and then personal i am i mean similar to adam like I, I i feel like one of the best things about going to a festival is that you meet so many incredible people and the harp studio last year like we would we were thick as thieves and inseparable and i mean even to this day like we all continue to keep in touch as well too and have formed lifelong bonds and friendships and it's a really like going to a festival is incredible because you get so much intense time together as well too and uh really get to create incredible friendships with with so many people and so the harp studio i just i I miss and i i can't wait for next year and for all of us to see each other again when thank you phoebe when i when i look back over the years um this is a whole different timeline for me but I, I'm thinking of all the harpists that came through Aspen, uh, people like Catherine Siochi, who's now with Kansas City, um, Emma Levine, who's da- with Dallas uh, Symphony, um, Nicola Toulier. He was years ago when my daughter was one year old and uh, one year old, and she, he carried her up to the top of um, uh, the Maroon Bells. Um, That's so uh, cute. Yep. Yeah. And now he's a principal harpist of, of Radio France. Uh, Mary Pierre Chevroche, she played her first Bartok Concerto for Orchestra. She's the principal harpist of of the um, uh, another uh, the National Symphony or the Orchestra Paris, actually. Gillian Bennett, who is in the Cincinnati Symphony, she spent many years on rollerblades in Aspen. Uh, so many people, and they all have wonderful positions now. So it's nice to watch everyone grow. But in my mind, everyone is the same age. So it's a little confusing. <laughs> a, 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 um, one of my, my favorite students and one of my earliest students, because my first class, I had 13 harp students. They just said, start a harp class here. We, did, we had very few harpists. And I said, okay, we'll do that. I was pretty young. I didn't know what was going to happen. We ended up with 13 instruments and 13 harpists. And one of those harpists was a, 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 a young lady who was a fantastic player from Cincinnati, Suzanne Handel. And now she's in Australia playing. Sarah Catlin also was there and she, she's in Australia also. Um, they, they've, they've been so many names and I could, I could probably list them all uh, over the years. But anyway, I'll, I'll try to remember which generation people come from, but it's sort of wild to think of all the harpists who have been through the festival. And I feel lucky to have been there early on and been able to to have stayed there for such a long time and learned so much repertoire because there aren't many chances in your life when you get to play girl leader on 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 such a huge stage but i i hope that we're all together next uh, next summer or a summer in the future and that we get to play something really grand all together and um i i totally enjoyed uh, listening to play your works and um individually it was fantastic um so i i i wonder if you have any other any any other comments about aspen ben have you ever been to aspen 
other than the airport, I've never been to Colorado. So uh, I was also definitely looking forward to Colorado scenery and all that. Right. So what, what's our favorite hike? Well, um, Adam, I feel like has only done one hike, <laughs> um, but Maroon Bells, actually we did Maroon Bells with Adam. That, that's Maroon Bells is a great one. It's great. Nice and, nice and uh, well, the scenery is great with it. Uh, Assam Mountain is also really fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll, we'll, we will plan a great, a great hike someday all together. And um, some people wonder about the, the musicians going out and hiking and, and the dangers, but I, I must say, I've never worried about that. I've never worried about my hands and nothing ever happened. I've, uh, I've seen many bears. I've seen a lot of deer, <laughs> seen a lot of raccoons. Um, and in fact, raccoons used to live on the top of the music tent years ago. We had a whole colony of them living up there and we would play our rehearsals and hear them up above us. Anyway, thank you so much. I, I loved listening to you play. I hope that you, had a great time in Aspen this summer and uh, and we will gather by the tent and collect our thoughts and also appreciate the opportunity to be together again someday soon so thank you for coming to Aspen and playing for us <laughs> thank you Nancy thank you Nancy I'm just ready for some bamboo bear <laughs> <laughs>